Today, everyone, we're going to push cinema's old particle system beyond anything it was ever designed to do. We are pretty much going to teach an old dog to do new tricks. Um, I want to show you some interesting things you can do with the old, and I mean the old, old particle system. Not thinking particles, the very original one. Uh, now, we all know it's pretty limited. If we go up to simulate particles, these are the only things you can really do with it. Make it fall down, spin it around, add a bit of turbulence. Uh, there's no collision detection. You can't choose where the particles go with a spline, for example. Or can you? Let's see what we can do with this, shall we? Now, essentially what we're going to do is we're going to use Cinema's MoGraph system to power up the particles. So let's start off by adding a particle emitter. And let's just leave this playing whilst we do all of this. So here's our particles flying off in a straight line. Um, let's let's do something with them. So I'm just going to pop them over here, and I'm going to boost uh, how many particles I have and how long this animation goes on for. So let's say I want uh, 250 frames of animation, and I'm going to bump up how many particles we have to maybe 50 per second. And you can see once we get to about frame 90, or sorry, 150, uh, they'll just suddenly stop emitting. So let's just tell this emission, keep going for the full length. Let's get 250 frames worth of particles. Okay, so I want to do something more interesting with these. I don't want them just flying off in a straight line. I want them to, well, I'll, I want them to do something more interesting. So the general key thing I'm going to be showing you today is the MoGraph matrix object. Now, it's quite possible you've never really delved into this much. It's certainly one of the more uh, powerful and not quite so obvious parts of the MoGraph system. The matrix object is kind of tricky to describe. Um, initially, it looks very similar to the cloner. So let's just pause this. Uh, if you add a cloner, this is the thing which gives you a, a grid of objects, or you can stick them onto other things. And you'll probably hopefully be fairly familiar with some of these settings down here. If you've ever worked with a matrix, it's pretty much the exact same settings. It, it all looks very, very similar. And in fact, they are so similar that Cinema does have a swap clone matrix command, which allows you to switch between the two. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to make use of the matrix. And you can see initially what we've got here. Uh, let me just set it back to grid mode. Uh, we've got this big grid of uh, cubes. Now do keep in mind, these are not real objects. If I hit the render button, there's nothing actually there. All of these cubes are simply uh, a representation of where an object will eventually go. They're simply using these cubes as markers. But really, you can think of each of these things as just a null object. But what we're going to do is we're going to tell our matrix, don't make a, a grid, don't make a line. I want you to stick these, uh, if you want the proper word for it, uh, these matrices. But let's just let's just call them markers. It's easier to work with. Um, I want to stick each of these markers onto a particle. So we're going to stick it to another object, and that other object in this particular case is the particle emitter. So if we drag and drop the particle emitter into the only place you can drag and drop it down here. MoGraph will now stick one of these sort of uh, temporary markers onto each object. So what we've achieved here is we have essentially converted Cinema's particle system into a MoGraph setup. And this is what opens it up to having far, far more power than it would normally have. Uh, the idea is now I can suddenly use all of these MoGraph effects on these objects. And through some interesting setups, we can actually also use all of the deformers on these uh, MoGraph matrix particles. So, for example, um, if I take a twist deformer, here we are, and I'll just spin it around 90 degrees because I know this is always facing the wrong direction. It's currently, uh, currently twisting up and down. I need to spin this around 90 degrees, hold shift, and what we can do is we can apply the twist to the matrix. So just for a moment, if I put the twist inside the emitter, Cinema is just going to try and emit lots and lots of twists. Um, and essentially, it doesn't do anything. The particles will just fly through and nothing really happens. But the nice thing about the matrix is it allows all these deformers to be used. Well, 
most of these deformers. Uh, so if I pop that into the matrix, all of my cubes will now spin and twist as they go through. Now you'll notice there is a sudden disconnect. Uh, let's just pause that there and zoom in. So there is a sudden disconnect where as I twist this, all these matrix clones, they will suddenly sort of get ripped away from their particle. They, they no longer line up with their particle. But that's okay. We're really just using this emitter to make the stream um, be created in the first place. Um, the matrix is now effectively our object. So if we hide the emitter, we don't really want to see that anymore. Uh, we're just going to concentrate on this matrix now. So with this twist, I can twist it around, choose the size of the twist, and I've now got this nice big uh, spiral of particles flying through the air. Now, you may at this point be thinking, well, hold on, what's the point of that? Surely we could have just gone to our particle system and added a, a rotation effect. And yeah, we can, that's true. Uh, but the nice thing is I can use all of these effects, not just the twist. So for example, if I grab a bend, um, I will just hide the twist because you probably don't want to see this big purple piece of junk sitting in the screen there. Let's just hide that. But I can now add the bend. As before, I'll spin it around so it faces the right direction. But I can now curve and sort of choreograph where these things will go. And the lovely thing is, if I just extend my twist size a bit, they will continue twisting as they go around the corner. Let's just make it twist a bit more. Let's, let's really go for it, actually. They'll twist through here, twist, twist through the corner, and continue twisting as they come up and around this bend. Spin, 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 spin. So that's sort of really the beauty of this. I can now use these various deformers to uh, choreograph and more precisely decide where the particles go. Normally I'd have to have used some wind to try and blow them around a the corner and then just sort of cross my fingers that they would all end up where I wanted them to be. But we can take this further. So let's forget the bends. That's, that's a bit simplistic. And maybe let's not quite twist them so much. Maybe... 2000. Okay, we can take this further. We could start using some of Cinema's spline deformers, either the spline deformer or the spline wrap deformer. Now, I'll show you both because they do have slightly different behaviors. Um, but the spline wrap, for example, if we come to our side view, here are our particles flying along. What we can do is pause this grab a spline drawing tool, so let's just go for the spline pen, and you can sort of draw a route that you would like these things to take. So I want them to start off over here. I then want them to dip down. I want them to fly over here, and then maybe come back there and sort of swoop back down into place. So if I choose my spline wrap and I tell it to deform the twisted matrix. So they're going to get twisted, and then they're going to follow this spline. So if you've never used a spline wrap before, um, what you do with this is you need to tell Cinema which spline they should follow, because, well, you might have a lot of splines. So spline, let's just drop this spline object into that box. You can see it goes completely wrong. If I hit play here, we just have this giant mess. So the next thing you generally need to do with the spline wrap deformer is tell Cinema what direction your object is is uh, sitting in. And by default, Cinema assumes that our object is... Let's pause that, a bit distracting. Uh, by default, Cinema assumes that your spline wrap is going to be acting on an object facing the X direction. Well, our object is going this way. And if we look down at the graph, this is the Z axis. So we need to tell the spline wrap this. Let's switch it to Z, turn it back on again, and ah, hmm, we now have our particles following our spline wrap. Now, it sort of works, but at the moment, not quite exactly how we want it to. Um, the first thing you'll notice is that our particles are already filling 
the complete and total spline, even before the particles have started. This is because by default the spline wrap tries to take your object and stretch it so it covers the entire shape of the spline you've given it. So let's, let's change this behavior. Uh, this is the mode. It is currently fitting all of our particles so that they fit to the spline. Let's tell it just keep your length and just basically don't stretch it to fit. Okay, so this is much better. This is much closer to what we're after. Um, but there is going to be a slight issue with this. One thing with the spline wrap is you need to make sure that the size of the object you're wrapping stays consistent. And the problem we've got is that ours doesn't. It starts off as a small object and then it grows and grows and extends and extends. And what this can generally cause is a sort of bit of jittering and vibrating and sort of random movement, especially at the start. So you'll notice it's a bit jittery. Some of these particles are sort of bumbling around and vibrating, but then as it goes on, they calm down and they get smoother. So what we've got to do is tell the spline wrap system what is the biggest shape that these objects will ever occupy. Uh, by default, it's automatic. So again, on the spline wrap, let's come down here and unfold bounding box. So Cinema is trying to automatically choose how big the object is and then refit it onto the spline. But because our thing, because our particle system changes shape and size, that goes a little bit wrong. So first, let's just make sure we're happy with how far the particles go and how much they cover. And I'm gonna generally say this is all just a bit slow. So just before I do change this bounding box, I'm gonna tell my emitter, could you speed up the particles? Could we have 300 centimeters per per second, per minute, per hour? I don't really know. Anyway, the speed is 300. Um, still not quite enough. Let's go 600. So now we've got the particles are getting much further, much faster, and it also really exacerbates the problem. You can see these particles are really, let's just turn off the twist for a moment. These particles start off at the animation really jittery and vibrate -y, and then as it goes further on, they calm down and they get a bit smoother. So we've really got to nail down this bounding box because that's what makes it jitter. And the easiest thing to do is just play the animation till it gets to pretty much the last frame. Hit pause. And on the spline wrap, just tell it it should have a fixed bounding box. This right here is the largest the object gets. So if I fix it, that should pretty much fix the jittering issue. If I press play now, they fly along and that, that's much better. They're much smoother, they're not vibrating and bouncing around all over the place. Uh, we've, we've solved that little issue. Um, let's turn our twist back on. So we now have, uh, and let's, let's make sure we also have the twist right. So do keep in mind, um, if I hide all of this stuff for a second and show the original particles, all that's really happening with the particles is they're flying along in a straight line, but then this matrix system is deforming it to fit the spline. So when we're twisting all of this, we want the twist, let's unhide it. We want this twist to sort of pretty much fit all these particles. Otherwise, only the first bit the particle system would twist and then it just goes in straight line afterwards. So I will just take my twist object, move it over kind of to the middle of the particle system and just stretch it out so it encompasses all of the particle stream. So now they should twist and spiral around much more even, much more fluidly. So again, let's turn this back on. Let's hide the particles because we don't want to see those. And let's try again. Let's hide the twist. Okay, so here's our matrix objects. They're flying along and they're much more smoothly, not quite so, uh, there's not quite so much twist on them anymore. Uh, but that's all looking pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. Um, I will just mention, by the way, there is another spline deformer you can use if you find this spline wrap a bit cumbersome. So keep in mind, with the spline wrap, you've got to add the spline, choose the direction, set the bounding box, tell it not to stretch it to fit the entire thing. It can be a little bit cumbersome. So I just want to mention, there is another choice with this. Rather than using spline wrap to get that stuff all fitting, what you could do instead 
is use the more old-fashioned spline deformer. Now with this one what you do is you draw two splines. One spline needs to be the shape you want it to be, and the other spline needs to be the shape that it currently is. So what Cinema will do is it'll take one spline and then sort of morph the object and shape it so it fits onto the other shape. Well, we already have the spline shape we want these things to have, so all we've got to do now is make one spline shape which represents the current original shape. So in a nutshell, duplicate the spline. So keep in mind, I've turned my spline wrap off for a moment. Uh, duplicate the spline. We'll call this one the uh, spline destination, and this one can be the spline original shape. And I've just got to take that copy and flatten it out so that it's the same shape as this particle system, because it will take this straight stream and rejig it into the spline shape. So let's just hide this, take the original shape, and let's very quickly re-sculpt this so that it fits. So if I pop that over there, put that spline point down here, and flatten it off, put that spline point here and flatten it off, and just bump this thing up there. I've basically taken my spline and made a straight line version. It's a bit tricky to see. So there we go, this is basically what I've drawn. But this, through the spline deformer, can be changed into this other shape. So let's go ahead and try it, shall we? Uh, spline, pop that inside, and give it the two settings. So what's the original spline? Well, that's the flat shape we drew. Boop. And what's the modifying spline? What's the destination shape? Well, that's this one here. Let's unhide the object and see what we get. So it's doing something, it's just not doing it very well. Um, the other thing with this spline deformer is you've got to choose how far can things go or sort of how far does it search for the spline in order to stick it onto the surface. Uh, and in a, look, in a nutshell, just turn up the radius and it works. So initially it's a bit naff, but as I turn up this radius, we should notice the splines are trying harder and harder to get onto the surface. So if I bump this up to 100, that's much closer. If I bump it up to 200 and I hit enter, that's trying even harder still. So let's just go 300, that's better. Uh, essentially, the higher this number goes, the more accurate it will stick to the spline. So let's just go maybe 500 and call it a day there. Uh, so you, you may find this one is a bit more simple and straightforward. You may prefer this spline over the spline wrap, but the results are fairly similar. They just work in kind of different ways. Anyway, choose your poison. Right, okay, so we've now got these splines flying along this path, doing kind of pretty much what we like. Let's push it to the next step. So we can sculpt and guide the, the route. That's something we couldn't do before. How about some physics? How about if we get these things to be able to collide with each other and bounce off other objects as they're moving? So let's first of all add a couple of obstacles. In fact, that's just before I do that, let's decide which version do we prefer. Do I like the spline deformer? Which is okay. Uh, if you notice it's speeding up at the end, by the way, as it comes down here. Whoosh. This is just because on my destination spline, or my original one, I think I stretched this point out at the end a little bit too far. So if I pull this back or if I push it out further, that would speed up or slow down how far those things go. In fact, was there another spline point or was that the last one over there? Yep, that was the last one. So adjusting the spline, you get to sort of choose where it speeds up and where it slows down. So that is uh, either another advantage or a disadvantage of the spline deformer. You know, treat it as you wish. But anyway, let's, let's just turn it off for a second and try the spline wrap. Which one do I prefer? You know what, I think I'll go for the spline wrap. So that works fine. I'll just lose this spline deformer, but I'm glad I showed you. Okay, so let's do some physics. Let's, uh, let's improve this a bit, shall we? So keep in mind, at the minute, all these cubes are just markers. There is nothing special about any of these things. We need to turn them into real objects. Otherwise, when I hit render, 
there's nothing actually there. So for this, I'll tell you what, at this point, let's uh, let's just group this stuff up, just so we can keep track of what's driving the animation. So let's choose these, Alt G, group them up. Okay. So I am going to use a cloner to clone some new objects onto my objects, uh, onto my particles. Sorry. Uh, so what should we clone? Let's uh, let's just keep it simple. Let's go for some spheres, and we'll clone a sphere in object mode. And what do we clone these things onto? Well, we have set up this matrix of objects to create the animation. So that is what we want to clone onto. So with the cloner in object mode, we're going to clone onto the matrix. So now each of those little matrix markers finally becomes a real object. So we are free to hide all of this fluff. We don't really need to see any of that. We're, we're kind of done with that. Okay, so here's a cloner. Let's just shrink these spheres down a bit. And I'll tell you what, let's throw a bit of randomness on. Let's get these bubbles being a bit of a different size. So cloner highlighted. MoGraph effects, and we'll just go random. But the randomness is not going to be the position, the randomness is going to be the scale. We shall uniformly resize these objects. There you go, just giving ourselves a bit of a bit of variety with these objects. But uh, yeah, let's get some physics going. Let's get these things colliding, let's get them doing something more interesting. So I would like to have a couple of obstacles in this uh, in this course. I would like a nice large sphere over here for them to sort of uh, hit and uh, skip over. And I would like another one over here for them to sort of nudge and uh, hit that and maybe sort of come around here as if they've collided off it. So if you've never used Cinema's physics before, the dynamic system, let me just give you a really quick rough version of this. Uh, anything you want to collide, you have to tell Cinema it's going to collide. So I'm going to take these two large spheres I have, go to my tags, and under Simulation, I shall choose Collider Body. These will collide with physics. And that doesn't do anything at the moment, because we also need to tell these small spheres that they should also collide. So let's choose the small sphere and do pretty much the same thing. Tags, simulation, but this time not collider bodies, because collider bodies never move. They're always just set in stone. Uh, these are going to be rigid bodies, which means they can collide with other rigid objects. So let's choose this. And yeah, well, it's, it's working, but we've lost all our animation. So at this point, I'm going to introduce you to the force. On your rigid body tag, come over to the force page. Um, the force is a way for you to blend between physics and the handmade custom animation you made yourself. So with a strength of zero, so we can choose position, sort of how, how badly do these objects want to get back to the animation path that we initially set to, set for them? Uh, and there's no limit on this, but just think of it as a scale of sort of uh, 0 to 10. So with 0, physics has full power. Physics just allows everything to fall straight down. But as I turn this up, let's go to 1. They'll try to follow the spline, but physics and gravity are really just kind of uh, getting... They're just kind of getting in the way. So it's, it's trying to follow, but it can't do it. So let's bump this up to 2. Okay, they're they're fighting. They're they're trying to follow the spline. They're just about getting up, but ooh, not not really doing that much. Although it does look quite nice. Um, yeah, and basically, just keep turning this up. The higher this number goes, the closer to the original animation you'll be. I tend to find something around the four or five mark is quite good, because that means they're going to follow the animation reasonably closely but they still have enough physics that they're going, to, they're going to do interesting things. So in our 3D view, they come down here, they smash against this, they then follow the rest of the spline up over here, and as they get to that next object, bam, they hit it. 
bounce off, slide round, and then they continue following the spline as they go over here. Um, and that generally is what I wanted to show you. Using the matrix, using a clone, or using some physics, we can take what is otherwise quite a basic, not very powerful particle system, and actually change it into something that's really, really quite useful. You can, you know, with, with physics, with collision detection, with the ability to sculpt paths with spline objects, that makes this physics, uh, this particle system far, far more useful. useful. So if you're not a fan of thinking particles because it's a bit too difficult and uh, your pockets aren't quite deep enough to get X particles, although very nice plug-in, um, yeah, this, this, can, this can take you further. So uh, yeah, that'll do for now. I think uh, I hope this has all been useful. If you've enjoyed it, let me know down below in the comments. If you've got any requests for any other videos, again, do let me know and I'll see what I can do. Uh, this is once again Mesh from 3D Fluff. Have a good day. In the meantime, if you would like some more particle tutorials, why not check out these Thinking Particle Tutorials by Noseman.